Hi guys, this is Wave618, it's the 29th of August 2018 and we've just gone 4pm BST. Okay, so we're just going to do an update on Bitcoin today. So we're long to an update and um, yeah, we're just going to talk a little bit about on the short term what prices are doing here. We're going to discuss about the bullish and bearish uh, arguments here because I still hear a lot of um, bullish sentiment which I want to address. Um, of course, I'm, I'm sure you know from watching my videos that I am bearish and until that bearish trend has been overcome, then I'll remain bearish. Um, so that's something that we're going to discuss in this video. Um, but um, yeah, before I get into that, just want to say massive thank you to you all getting uh, a lot of um, um, a lot of followers recently, uh, both on Twitter and YouTube. So hit the 2,000 follower. Uh, mark on Twitter and about that's around 2800 on YouTube so that's growing nicely um, and of course I don't I probably don't post as much as other um, other traders so I'm, I'm quite happy with those rates for now and uh, as time goes on I'm, sh you, I'm sure you'll find me posting a lot more frequently but um, yeah really happy with that on top of that I just want to mention that um, I've uh, got really good feedback from the, the new newsletter that um, just started with um, Financial Freedom. So this was our first edition here, so I just want to touch on that. So um, yeah, as I say, we've got really positive feedback, we've got loads of subscribers straight away. Um, we have st um, initially advertised it at a discounted rate of around 9.99, that's in pounds. And um, yeah, it's absolutely packed full of content here. So if we just scroll down, you can see it's several pages long. And uh, yeah, we spend a lot of time assessing the charts and then putting it into writing for you. We have an educational section and weekly columns where we discuss about trading in general and not just talking about technical analysis. So it is good as an all-round uh, piece of material to learn about trading. So, um, but yeah, uh, because we've got so many subscribers straight away, we are going to look at increasing the price gradually. So that is only for new subscribers. So anyone who has already subscribed, they're not going to be affected by any change in price. We wouldn't do that. And um, yeah, but um, we're trying to establish a, a, you know, a price of value really. And because we've gone beyond our targets with subscribers, we're just increasing the price a little bit. And uh, it may be adjusted further in the future, depending on uh, subscription rates. But uh, yeah, so uh, really positive feedback there. Really happy that um, you appreciate this uh, newsletter. So um, yeah, you'll see plenty more of those. Um, so yeah, this is on a weekly basis that we'll be releasing them. All right, but over to Bitcoin. So um, all right, so you'll know from watching my previous videos that I've been looking at this um, WXY play out here. So we're on the four hourly chart. We've got the we've got the log scale on here, so that's fine. All right, so I've been looking at this as a W down to here. Then we've had a triangle, descending triangle. That's A, B, C, D, E. So that's, that triangle was the end of the X wave. And then I'm looking for Y wave to be a 0 0.382 extension of wave W, which comes down to around 3200. Um, so if you've watched my previous couple of videos, I'll explain that in detail, why I'm looking for that play out. So far, Bitcoin has almost replicated what it's done in 2014. Now, as traders, we have to look at fractal patterns. It's the same market participants who are involved in the market. And so it's very reasonable to look for patterns in charts. And we, as technical analysis traders, that's what we rely on. We rely on patterns. So I think we have every reason to think that if price has been following almost identically to what it did in 2014, then there's no reason now all of a sudden to think that it's not going to play out the same way. Um, so I've shown in previous videos how we did see this descending triangle play out. So if we just draw the borders of the triangle there. So that's our base. And then we've got our descending line at the top connecting the, the lower highs. And um, this is exactly what we saw in 2014 also. Um, so, yeah, until I see anything to suggest that price isn't playing out the same way or any downtrend is broken, 
then I'll start entertaining the possibility of a bullish move. But until that happens, there's absolutely no reason to suggest that. We haven't yet reached the 78.6 retracement of the whole move up to $20,000. So that 78.6 retracement is around 4,200 um, or 4,300 even. And the reason that level is significant is because every time we've seen a parabolic move up in Bitcoin throughout its history since 2010 uh, is always retraced 78.6 percent so why all of a sudden would we start thinking that it's not going to happen this time okay yes bitcoin is better known and that's the reason it went up to twenty thousand dollars but still it's going to retrace the same amount okay um so that's my argument for it anyway uh, and at the moment it's respecting all the downtrend markers if we look on the daily time frame here so if we just pull up the simple moving averages you can see this 200 day moving average got respected so well everyone was looking for it to go above this point and uh, yeah, it hit this, it bounced off this 200 day moving average really nicely. Okay, so let's just take that off a moment. So we can remove those lines now. I think that's quite clear. And so the, the best way is to mark trend, in my opinion, are using moving averages, but also pitchforks. So you'll know in recent videos, I've been talking about pitchforks quite a lot. Um, so let's just have a look at a few of the long-term pitchforks. So if we just put on so we can look at this pitchfork. So we always look on the log scale with Bitcoin. The reason being is because when you have price movements in the parabolic that follow a parabolic fashion you'll find the chart respects the logarithmic scale much better when we're drawing trend lines. Um, so yeah, this was the initial pitchfork that I had drawn when I was previously looking at this as being a potential WXYXZ play out. So I was looking at a possible WXYX and then Z coming down to here. That was until I realized that this has played out like a very nice descending triangle. So that was my initial wave count. And that's why we've drawn this pitchfork with the first pivot here, second pivot, third pivot. And you can see that until this descending upper warning line here of this pitchfork breaks, then there's no reason to think that um, the bulls have control of this market. Once this breaks, of course, I will change my sentiment well, that's at around 8,200 level, okay? So um, that was if the WXYXZ um, playout was going to happen. However, since then, I've been looking at this descending triangle. And if we just plot that one. So... If we're looking at this descending triangle, then this is our foot. This will be a W, X, end of the triangle here, and then Y. So now we plot our um, pitchfork in a different way because your first pivot would be at the beginning of W, second pivot at the end of W, and then third pivot at the uh, end of the X wave. So right now, I think this descending line is going to get respected. I can't see us breaking out of this. Of course, I will start... If we see a, a, um, a satisfactory breakout of this line, I will start to look at the possible bullish scenario, but I do not see price going above this. It's around 7,500. I believe that will hold as resistance if it goes up to that level. Um, so we will look on the shorter time frames in a moment, but um, certainly I'm looking at this line to act as temporary resistance and then I'm looking for price to come down to a minimum of 4,200. And as I said, that if Y is a 0.382 extension of W, that actually comes down to 3,200. And we have very good horizontal support at the 3,000 level. Um, 
around here. You can see previous bounce here where it acted as support and resistance here. So where uh, resistance suddenly becomes support, that often acts as a very significant um, horizontal price level. Okay, so that's the reason I think that we're respecting all the downward trend markers. So, so far, we've done nothing to suggest that Bitcoin is bullish. Um, so far, all the bearish trend is being followed. Even if price comes up to 7,500, that's fine. If that breaks, we have to then ask questions. But until that happens, there's no reason to doubt the downward uh, sentiment in Bitcoin. Um, especially when it's playing out, as I say, almost identically to what it did in 2014. If you, uh, I won't go into the 2014 chart too much in this video because I addressed it quite clearly in my last couple of videos. But um, uh, So yeah, check those out if you do want to see how it's uh, replicating 2014. But um, yeah, so I think that's quite clear here uh, why I'm still looking at the bearish outcome. Now, I think we can look on the shorter time frames. So let's have a look on the hourly here. Right, so at the moment, I'm looking as, as I say, for this to be a retracement, 7,500 to be the resistance. Um, and so really what I look for is a confluence of indicators. Uh, that's always what I look for. So I, when I look for confluence, I'm generally looking for a confluence between Elliott Wave and Pitchforks. Uh, I find that to be a very powerful confluence. And that could be towards the end of this month, um, you know, in the next few days really, because we're approaching... Uh, Uh, well, it's around this time that we've got the futures expiry on Friday. So, um, yeah, that always adds a lot of volatility. So once, you, once you've got volatility and a confluence of indicators, that is a very powerful setup. Now, um, just plotting some fibs here. So if we plot the fib retracement from the previous high to the low. So it's always important to look for a potential reversal at fib level. So we've got our 50% fib level at 7182. So it would be worthwhile looking for a potential shorts round here. However, I've got a feeling it could come up and test this 61.8% retracement at around 7,500 because, as I say, this may be acting as a bit of a magnet and drawing price in to test this, um, this pitchfork line here. So certainly that is a confluence there um, with the, the 7,500 um, that being the 61.8 retracement of the previous high low and also hitting the pitchfork there. Now, um, so let's just take off that a moment. And now there's a couple of pitchforks we can look at on this shorter time frame here, um, which so far have been working quite well. So let's take a look at those. So this is our first one that we can look at. So we can see here an initial spike up, then a retracement. It's a flat pattern here. And you can see price immediately went and tested the upper median line, came back down, tested the lower median line. Then it's been moved straight up to the median line here. Now the question is where it's going to go from here. Now, it could very well slowly come up to this 7500 level and test the upper median line here. I can't really see it testing the warning line. It seems like it would have to go up too fast uh, to reach that. So I can't really see that happening. Um, in terms of how it will play out, it's looking like this could be a potential uh, A, B, C, and then this may be an X wave before we see another corrective uh, move up. Um, there is another pitchfork to look at, so if we just bring up so this is our other one. So I've plotted this one on a much shorter time scale here. I think it's probably clearer on the 15 minute. Um, so we can look at that one also because as I say, this looked like a A B C play out. This could be our X wave. And our final corrective pattern, we can use a pitchfork for that. So 
If we look on the 15 minutes, look at that one. So there was a spike up here. We take off everything here. We can see this was an impulse move up initially in itself. So we can see that there. So that was our first wave. And this was our second wave. And you can see price has been following these lines once again. So uh, again, tested the upper median line, right back down to the lower median line. Then it broke up, hovered around the median line, and then it's come down and stayed within the trading range here. It didn't go beyond the, the lower warning line. And now you can see that price has come down below this lower median line, whether it may come down and retest this lower warning line. But as I say, I'm looking for price to potentially come up to the 50% fib of the previous high low, which was at around 7182. And if that doesn't hold, I'll be looking for possible shorts around 7,500. Uh, and I think that 7,500 is probably more likely. Um, and so, yeah, that's just looking at pitchforks, really, just on the short term. And so let's just take those off a moment. And we can zoom back out on our four hourly chart now. And we can quickly plot the um, VPVR, so looking at volume profiles here. And you can see at around 7500 there is a spike in volume. So you can see where we are at present, just above. And the reason we found a bit of resistance here is because there's clearly horizontal resistance here because straight after it is low volume. That means that there's nothing really to keep price at this price level here. So once it goes above here, it will shoot past to the next um, level of value, which is around that 7,500 level. So that's just using volume as well to look at where price may go to. So um, yeah, then my, um, that's my forecast for the time being. We're going to have to wait and see how this plays out. It's not, it is a complex corrective pattern that is playing out here. And lots of people will be interpreting it in different ways. Um, now, I know a lot of people will be looking at a potential, um, let's just take this pitchfork off a moment. So, a lot of people will be looking at this as being a potential triple bottom with a first bottom, second bottom, third bottom. Now, there's always more than one um, Elliott Wave scenario. There's always a bullish and a bearish scenario. Now, I'm going with probability when I say I believe that price is coming down further. But I know a lot of people will see this potential triple bottom setup. You know, it's very difficult to argue that this is a triple bottom. Um, you can see price really rebounding off this level at 5,900. But um, as I say, as much as it's a triple bottom, it is a WXY. So... And just because Bitcoin has always come down to 78.6% retracement of the previous high, and uh, and it's played out exactly the same way as 2014, there's no reason to doubt that now. Once it starts breaking out of these pitchfork levels, of the warning lines of those pitchforks, then I'll entertain the bullish scenario. But until then, there's really absolutely no reason to, from my point of view. Um, so, yeah, I think I've summarized pretty much Everything I want to say there, we've looked at it really from an Elliott Wave pitchfork volume. Um, we've looked at, talked about fractals, um, sentiment. So, um, yeah, we've covered a lot there. Um, so that's my view. I know a lot of people, when I post, they still say I'm crazy to call it to be bearish, but that's just my analysis. Um, and I'm, I'm very happy to hear people argue it, but... Um, I need to hear some reasoning behind that, that argument before I can change my mind. And, and I've really not uh, had heard any reasonable arguments so far. So, um, yeah, going to wrap it up there, guys. Again, just want to say a massive thank you to all the support. Um, all right, I'll wrap it up. Take care.